All right, we are at uh, chapter 20, The Kinetic Theory of Gases. Uh, it starts off with a story about a uh, fellow wanting to, I believe he wants to build a fire, and so he wets his finger, holds it up in the air to determine the um, wind direction, and begins to wonder why, why, the, the, why that helps you find the wind direction. Well, well, we'll discover that. It has to do with evaporation. We'll discover that at the end of the chapter. Uh, we're going to start with uh, section um, 20.1, the molecular model of an ideal gas. I'm going to dismiss the uh, my image so that it doesn't interfere, interfere with the, the presentation. Uh, and so we start off with a very simplified uh, model of the, the uh, hydrogen atom, uh, an electron orbiting around the, the proton. This is the way people used to think of it. We now know with quantum mechanics that there's a probability cloud that defines where the electron might be found. It's not a. It's not an orbit like we think of it, uh, but it, it's just a very simplified model, and it's useful uh, for some applications. But uh, we're going to talk about the kinetic theory model, and, and we're going to talk about the physical components. Um, and the physical components are, are simply that the gas uh, consists of a number of identical molecules within a cubic container of side length d. You can see the d here on, on all three sides, it's a, it's a cube of side D. The number of molecules in the gas is large and the average separation between them is large compared with their dimensions. Uh, so the molecule occupies a negligible volume of the container. And so this, is, this assumption is consistent with the ideal gas modeling. Um, so the, um, that's the physical components. The behavior components are such that the molecules obey Newton's laws of motion, but as a whole, their motion is isotropic. Isotropic means that from viewed from any direction, they appear the same. Um, the uh, molecules interact only at short distance, uh, short range forces during elastic collisions. Um, and that molecules make elastic collisions with the walls of the containers um, and with each other. So uh, that's the, uh, uh, those are the assumptions we're gonna make for this ideal gas. And we're going to start off by um, determining the momentum, the change in momentum, uh, delta p x i. That's i is it's not initial. Um, you know, we also we talk about uh, initial position and final position. This is not that i. This is the ith, um, the ith molecule. So there's n molecules, and this is you know uh, molecule one, two, three the ith molecule. So the uh, delta P xi is equal to uh, the minus m0 times the uh, vxi uh, minus m0 vxi. Uh, so if you recall, the, the, uh, if you've got uh, velocity in one direction, vxi, it rebounds with the opposite uh, uh, direction minus vxi. So you, you subtract that, you end up with minus two M zero VXI. Um, so the impulse, the average FI, the average impulse, the average force on the molecule times the delta T of the collision, how long it takes to uh, change directions. That's the change in, in the momentum. And that's equal to minus two M zero VXI. Um, now delta T is the distance um, the distance divided by the velocity. Um, so it's twice D. Um, this is the, the delta T to go, go across the, uh, uh, the, the volume. So it's 2D divided by VXI. So the uh, impulse, the uh, uh, FI delta T is equal to 2M0 VXI. Now let's solve for FI. Uh, the, average force, you get the 2m0 vxi divided by delta t. And so if we substitute delta t, the 2d over vxi, well, since it's in the denominator, we can use the reciprocal and it's vxi over 2d. So that becomes 2m0 vxi, I'm sorry, minus 2m0 vxi squared over 2d. And that equals to uh, minus m0 vxi squared over D. Uh, let's see. So the force on the wall uh, is minus the uh, 
the force that the particle exerts. So that's minus a minus M0 VX I squared over D, which becomes a positive M0 VX I squared over D. Um, the, uh, so the force is this, the total force, the, the total average force is the sum of all of these uh, M0 VX I squared over D. Now the M0 and the D, they're, they're constant, so they can be pulled out. So it's M, M0 over D times the sum of all these VXI squareds. Um, the uh, force is equal to uh, M0 uh, D, the sum of all these uh, VX squareds. Okay, uh, we're at the same place. Uh, the average V is equal to the sum of VXI squared divided by N, the number of objects that we have. So it's the, the sum of all these VX squares is equal to N uh, times the average VX uh, squared. So the force is equal to M0 D times N VX squared, the average uh, VX squared. Now we have that's only in the x direction. We have three um, directions, x, y, and z. So vi, the total velocity, is the sum of these. Um, so it's the, um, we take the average of each of these. The average velocity is equal to the average of the uh, x squared, the average of the vy squared, the average of vz squared. Um, so if we, we take these, it's... Uh, since it's isotropic and, and they, it looks the same from all directions, the average V squared is equal to three V X squared. Um, so the force is equal to one third of N M zero uh, average V squared over D. So the pressure, uh, pressure is equal to the force divided by the area. And so for one wall, that's the force divided by D squared, that's equal to um, one third N M zero V squared over D cubed um, is equal to one third uh, N over V where V is the volume M zero V squared. Uh, the, you know, D cubed is the volume. So we substitute the, uh, for D cubed, we substitute V. So the pressure is equal to two thirds N over V, uh, the number of molecules divided by the volume times one half M zero V squared. So uh, given that we, in, we equate it to uh, PV equals NK, KB T. Um, we see that T is equal to three, uh, two thirds KB one half M zero V squared. And we see that the, uh, that's the, the kinetic energy, one half uh, mv squared, this kinetic energy, that's equal to three halves kbt. So that's the, the um, kinetic energy of the, uh, uh, the uh, molecule is three halves kbt. So the average uh, velocity in the x direction squared is equal to one third uh, v squared that equals to one half, that d d derives to um, the one half M zero VX squared, which is the kinetic energy is equal to one half KBT uh, for just the X direction. Uh, so the, it's the same for the Y and it's the same for the Z. So each degree of freedom contributes one half three KBT to the energy of a system where possible degrees of free freedom are those associated with translation rotation and vibration of molecules. Now for a monatomic, um, monatomic uh, molecule, we, we don't, we don't uh, get vibration and rotation, it's just translation. So here's some uh, common root mean square speeds um, uh, shown here. And here's the, uh, the kinetic energy of uh, the total trans total translational kinetic energy is equal to n number of molecules times one half m zero v squared is equal to three halves uh, n kbt 
equals the three has NRT. Now the three comes from the, you know, you have one half uh, KBT for the X direction, the Y direction and the Z direction. So there's three of them, three halves NRT. Um, so the V RMS is equal to uh, V, the average V squared, that's equal to uh, the square root of three KBT divided by M zero, uh, which is three RT divided by uh, the molar mass uh, M, capital M. And here's a, a, a table of the uh, some common root mean squared. Okay, here's a quick quiz. Two containers hold an ideal gas at the same temperature and pressure. Both containers hold the same type of gas, but container B has twice the volume of container A. Uh, what is the average translational kinetic energy per molecule in container B? Well, the key here is that the two containers hold an ideal ga gas at the same temperature and pressure. Um, so the translational kinetic energy is really just a, dependent on, on temperature. And so it's gonna be the same. It's the same as that of container A. Now, two containers hold an ideal gas at the same temperature and pressure. Both containers hold the same type of gas, but container B has twice the volume of container A. What is the internal energy of the gas in the uh, container? Well, it's twice. If we, if we look back here, um, let's see, what do I, the, the N is the number of, of molecules. And, and if it's twice, if it's the same temperature and pressure, then it's got twice the molecules. And so it's twice that of container A uh, because of that N. Okay, and that's the end of section 20.1. Uh, we'll go on to uh, the next section, 20.2, which is the, um, uh, let me see what, what it's called the molar specific heat of an ideal gas.